Okay, today is Monday, uh, September, September 30th, 30th. Uh, 2002. And this is the beginning of an interview with George Heppenstall. Mm -hmm. um, we're at his home in uh, North uh, East, East Greenbush, Green New York. Yeah. Um, and the address is 69 Old Red, Red Mill, Mill Road, Road. Uh, mailing address is Rensselaer, New York. My name is Ed Roger, and I'm conducting this on behalf of the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. Um, good morning, Mr. Heppenstall. How are you today? I'm good. Um, if you, uh, let me see, could you tell me what your birth date was? My birth date yeah. was 1-16-25. 1625, okay. Um, and the your affiliation in the military, what branch of service were you in? I was in the yes, <coughs> United States Navy. U.S. Navy. U.S. Okay. Navy, right. Um, did you serve in, uh, in combat? We were in combat in the Mediterranean. We are in combat, yes, in, in 44, 1944. 44. Right. W was that basically all of your military experience uh, in right. the Navy in, in that war? Or right. I just spent most of my time in the Mediterranean, back and forth, you know, in the Atlantic and in the Mediterranean, right. Okay. Two years aboard the ship. Um, what... Uh, what rank did you achieve? What I ended up with the, which was then called coxswain, C-O-X, but now it's boat's mate third class, okay. I think. Okay. Good. Now, did you dra uh, were you drafted in, uh, into the Navy or did you enlist? Well, I, my birthday was on the 8th, 16th of January. I went down to the draft board, told them I was going to go join the Navy. I went across the river and joined the Navy the same day. Uh -huh. I was 18, right. They didn't. They put me down as a drafted, but I was I enlisted. You enlisted, yeah. basically. Okay. What what drove you to do that? What, what were you feeling? About? I don't know. It was just everybody around was going in service, and I figured it was my turn to follow suit. Right. There was nobody left at home. Exactly. <laughs> right. Where where was home at that time? Home was down in Rensselaer. I lived in the city of Rensselaer at that city. time. Right. Okay. Um, do you can you remember what your your first days were like when you when you joined the service? God, I don't know. It's a change from, it was from a what change what we're here, doing, so. right? I thought I remember getting on the train and going to Sampson, New York. Where's Sampson? Uh, Sampson is out near Geneva, New York. Okay. It was a boot camp for the Navy out there. I think I spent six or eight weeks out there, and really snow and wind and everything out there. Yeah. It was so cold we didn't even go out and parade. What time I, of year was this? It was in January, okay. January the 16th, right? <laughs> 1943, yeah. right. Um, what what was the boot camp like? Was it uh, were you intense or did you have hard structures? Or? Well, we had regular barracks, and the trouble is, we it was so much snow and cold we couldn't get out in March, and we'd done a lot of our March and stuff. with they had a big field house up there, and it was schooling on this, you know, how to tie knots and how to do yeah. this and how to make your bunk up and all that stuff, you know, <laughs> just regular. Do you remember how many people were were at Samson at the same time you were? Oh boy, it was it was it was tremendous. There was section after section after. I really don't know. It was just I'd say in our in our barracks on the first floor it was like a hundred men, maybe on the second floor, and then there were barracks all the way around the, the compound, like oh. right. How long were you there before you shipped out? I think it was. Six or eight weeks, I think. Eight oh. weeks, I think. It was very short. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a very short period. And during that time, what what did you learn? I mean, was it basically just drilling? Just, and, just and drilling and, and right and uh, oh, just marching and drilling and getting up early in the morning and doing we KP. We had KP for a week and you know, I remember even just having fire watch, which was down taking care of the boilers and he had watched they had watched different things it was just regular drilling just constant drilling that's all it was did you make any good friends during boot camp day boot camp no i don't even don't remember any but friends that uh, actually i met that i'm still interested uh -huh. in uh -huh. and a lot of my friends were school were in the same you know territory there that we met that i met how about your instructors? Do you, any of them register with you? No, they don't. They don't. I just cannot remember that. That part of it is just gone to me for some reason. I remember they were tough and getting you up in the morning and what five o'clock and then drilling all day and making bed watches and all this stuff. Right. 
but you just got through it. Oh, yeah, it didn't problem. bother me okay. at all. So what, what was the next step then? You left Samson. My next step was I got transferred to Norfolk, Virginia, to the uh, Naval Hospital there to become, uh, hmm, what were they, pharmacists in the Marine Corps. It would the Navy, the Navy put them pharmacists in there or, yeah. or medics, whatever they want to call them at that time. And, Oh, I just didn't like that at all. I didn't didn't care for that. So, why not? oh, was studying all this stuff. I that wasn't for me. So, there was about four of us went to the, I think it was lieutenant commander or something at that time, and told them, you know, we just can't take this stuff. We want to get out to sea on a ship. And geez, they turned us the next day and shipped us right over to the Norfolk, the another barracks, mm -hmm. and they assigned us to a ship. What ship? Uh, the USS Smart, DE-257, and we went through all kinds of training over there. That was really a... Now that's a destroyer escort, Escort, right? the same as we have down here in Albany, yeah. And what's the role of a destroyer escort in the, in the Navy? What's, what function does it perform? Oh, they're submarines and convoy protection. Okay. To, you know, outskirt the convoy or, or a, a carrier or that, or, you know, submarine warfare, more or less, is what it was for. And so you, you moved to the DE on, in Norfolk? In Norfolk, but not on the ship. We're in the barracks down there training. We went to training down there, all swimming and jumping in water and everything you do aboard ship, firing guns and going out and I think with little little creek and firing guns and all. We went right through the whole training. Then they shipped us to, up to Boston, Mass, mm -hmm. which the ship was being built up there at that time. And we were in the barracks over in, I think it was Quincy. I'm not quite sure. Quincy, I think they call it. Quincy Navy Yard. Okay. And then we were there for maybe a month before we went aboard ship and commissioned a ship. Then we took the ship down to... So, so this was a new ship? That it's a brand getting? new ship, right, okay. commissioned, right. And we took the ship down to Bermuda on a shakedown cruise and back to Boston again. Huh. We're down there for a month and back to Boston. And, and do you recall how many people were on the ship? I'd say around roughly 200. 200. Somewhere around there they carry, right. And what was the complement of officers to enlisted? Mm, I'd say we had probably had 12 officers. Okay. 12 officers, I'd say around 12. So this was all part of the training now. You're still in- Right, we're still in training, in right. And Quincy. We, went, we went down to Bermuda. We're shake down crews and fire the gun. Now we come back and load it all up, ready for, mm -hmm. you know, active duty. Yeah. Do you, can you remember what I mean? What were you or, or your your friends thinking at that time? I mean, was this sort of like a, a fun, a lark thing? Or I think were you it was going to war. Or? We're going to war. I just think it was just a bunch of us having a good time. I think is what it was. Yeah, that's right. Right. Till you get out there after a while, and from there, you know, boom, boom, boom. Then you start thinking, oh Lordy, you're going to get. Our socks knocked off here, but we managed all the way through. We never had no problem. Did you didn't dwell on that much then? No, no. We we always had a good time aboard ship, movies and everything. You know, it was. We've had a few exciting times, but you know. Like what? Can you remember? Like like what? Exciting times. In, into uh, meaning fighting into into the service. Well, like? uh, yeah, you just said that. I, I guess you were talking about more into the into the combat situation. But we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. All right. Um. So, what was your job or your assignment? Uh, when I went aboard ship, I was a seaman. A seaman. A seaman, which paint and chip and paint and and, and our general quarter station. I was on a one point one gun as a trainer. Okay. Which the trainer was a spotter and a trainer on there. That was my duty for uh, general quarters. And the, oh, the trainer moves, swings so the gun? One, one that pointer, point up down, the trainer went sideways with it. Okay. <laughs> I had to get this straight. I think that's the way it was. And, and the target would be aircraft? Aircraft, right. We're strictly for aircraft. 1.1 1 .1 was a four barrel gun, which I can show you pictures of it here. Yeah, if you got one handy. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> oh, that's a three inch. We're here somewhere. Okay, this is a one point gun here. See, it's the four, four barrel gun. Sticking up there? Okay. Is that yours? This is your ship? Yeah, this is the ship I was on, right? Trying to get a better picture. Well, that's it, but you're not looking at the right way. <laughs> well, here it is again. Now, these these were all taken during these during the been training and during the training. And on the course of the two years I yeah. was in, one year we had one cruise. We did have a fellow took a lot of pictures. An officer could only one could take pictures. Oh, really? Yeah, he was the only one allowed to take pictures. So he took all these pictures and made and and he sold them. <laughs> he had to make a buck. Sure. And this is where you know we got these from. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so you, you were in Boston and Quincy and going to Bermuda and stuff. Bermuda, and right. Did you find, well, that, what was the next step? Our next trip was across the ocean. We took a convoy to Casablanca. So that was your, that was your first That was our first mission. actual going across the ocean with a convoy, yes. With were, you, were you familiar with the ocean? Were you seasick? Oh, you I, when I first went to Bermuda, I was sicker than, sicker than a dog. But you got over it, then after that you were seem to be all right. I, to this day, I go out and get seasick. <laughs> but there, for after I got the first time, it didn't seem to bother you after that, right? Well, it gets, but it was rough, a lot of rough waters. Yeah. And these things... Really big storms? Oh, yeah, these things really knocked the socks off you, these little DEs. They were they, like puddle jumpers out what, there. What time of year were you crossing now? Summer? I don't know what the first trip was. I made 11 trips back and forth. Okay. That first trip was Casablanca. I have no idea what mm. what the date was. So you were escorting um, convoys, convoy. which was probably 80 ships or so, and usually in a convoy it was um, the outskirts were DEs. Then it was like maybe it might have been a carrier or something in there with you. Uh -huh. And you just, you know, they went in a row across the ocean and, well, we, we outskirted for submarines or whatever like that. And if you got a contact, you'd see the convoy all split up, but then maybe the next day they'd all get back together again. But we didn't lose a ship, really. Did you, did, but were you attacked? Were, were there submarines? Some there? Yeah. We always had submarines around. It was yeah. always, you know, submarines. Whether we just pushed them off or, or what, I don't know, but different, you could feel it during the night You'd pick, have general quarters, you could feel different ships dropping depth charges off. Now, we never did get a submarine or anything, but... Did you ever get shot at? Oh, yes. So, By well, I don't... What do you mean, shot at? Well, was your ship attacked? Oh, yeah. We were attacked in the Mediterranean. Uh, on May the 11th, 1944, we were attacked by German U... What are they, U... No, not U boat, aircraft. Oh. We were packed by aircraft. Uh, this, was, well, this was the convoy under air attack May of 1944, and we got 13 planes that night and five assistants. Oh. And that was, our first, that was the first convoy to go through without losing a ship in the Mediterranean. Huh. Through to where? To uh, oh, I don't know where we're headed there. Probably to Bizzerti, maybe, or where did we end up? Probably Bizzerti or Palermo. So you did go there, go through there, and the different ships would break off and go to different cities. You all didn't go to to one one spot. Now everybody's got to goes through Gibraltar. Right? Everybody got to go through Gibraltar. And is that a was that a oh that thing? was that was. Well, when you got to there, that was where usually you had to go down almost single file through there or two file. But that was where we really had a scoop because that's where the Germans always try to get their submarines into there. Mm -hmm. A from the Azores into Gibraltar is where all the trouble was. Mm -hmm. So on that mission, you got a bunch of we, aircraft? We got 13 that night. 13. We got two or, yeah, 13. General planes destroyed, five assists and four probables. 
Oh, this was sent to me by my brother-in-law, which he copied this yeah. out of the yeah. out of the records down in Washington or somewhere. Were, were you on the guns that night? I was on the gun that night, right? One point one gun. Whether we got hit or anything, right? Yeah, right. Okay, that night when you're on the one point one gun, yeah, I was a train and pointer. But above us, there was another fella, two fellas, who, who run it was higher above us, and he'd run by a motor. They they could run the 1.1 gun, and we were there in case that broke to take over down below. So you you weren't you weren't able much to look at what was going oh, on. Oh, I looked. Oh, I could see everything was going on. Okay. Let's say that night though, we laid a, a smoke screen around the uh, convoy and really cluttered ourselves in. So boy, you they had to get right to you mm -hmm. to see them right. You know, had to get down into the cloud, but they didn't get any of us that night. But that was one of our nights. You know, we're lucky. I will say we're lucky. All we, half the guys said that we do it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Did Did you lose crewmen on your ship at all? No, we never lost a person. No, okay. never lost a person. That's mm -hmm. one thing we're 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 lucky. We're Very we're just a lucky bunch, yeah. right? Um, so you, you were doing this, basically, convoy duty back and forth? Back and forth. For two years? Back for two years, right. Okay. And how many convoys did you say? I think it was 11 times across the ocean, right. Convoy in each direction? Yes, back both, okay. both ways, right. Um, so what was the Navy life like on the ship? I mean, did you get leave at all? Uh, I you, loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Yes, okay, you'd leave here and it'd take you probably... 22 days to go across the ocean. Say 18 to 22 days, according to how fast you were going. And when you got to Algiers or Iran, you got to go off the ship, you know, for your liberty and stuff. But when we crossed, we bring a convoy, and then we turn around and pick up another convoy and bring it back home. When we come back home to the States, we're always in the States for a couple of weeks anyway, two or three. We got, uh, we got leave then, yeah. always got leave. And how, how long would you be on leave in, in Europe? In a day or so, just a day. Just a day, sometimes just hours. You would, they never let you get off too much. Maybe go like noon to five or something like that. Noon to seven. But we had a lot of uh, dock parties, baseball games. Yeah. And but your we, real leave was back in the States. Back in the States, right, yeah. And then you'd be off for how long? Well, we had a good commander. If you lived in Chicago, and I lived in Albany here, I could give you my five days. We had five days apiece. I could give you my five days where you could take 10 days and go home. Where I was here in Albany, and I could catch a train here on the 48 hours up and back home. And we, we worked it that way. Hmm. So, if, you know, next time that you, I'd get the 10 days and I'd go home. And, but we had a good crew, we had a good commander, which would let us do things like that. Yeah. And was that, do you think that was typical, or did you feel I really, I really don't no know. Idea. I couldn't tell you that, whether you could, long, the commander said, uh, as long as we got two or three coxswains aboard, you know, that one could go and he could stay aboard. Now, how, how'd you stay in touch with your family? Uh, email, email. E you sent them little emails? Email, uh, email. E no, not e v v email. V mail. V mail. I think it email. Email is today. Now, V mail with a letter, little letters that you could put in and send back home. And when you get overseas, you'd have your mail there waiting for you. Okay. And uh, just letters back and forth. And I always had a little code with my mother where I'd be when I come home. I'd write codes out so I'd yeah. put in letters so nobody knew what the, if they sent you the letters you sent back home. Yeah. Um, I've always heard that, you know, the Navy treats its crews very good in terms of food and stuff like that. Was that your experience? Or? We had good food. Did you? We had good food, and right? plenty of it? Plenty of it, right. Never had no, I won't say trouble, maybe the last few days coming back to the States, you were getting low and yeah. you ended up with, uh, well, I won't say it, but baloney is what they call it now. Yeah. Bologna or yeah. stuff like that. I think but, you know what you mean. <laughs> um, 
When, when you were on leave, um, do you recall any particularly unusual event or anything that was particularly funny or enjoyable? Or? Oh, well, I always come home and enjoyed myself. I remember coming home for 30 days and I spent time up helping a fellow paint a barn okay. the whole 30 days because that's all I was to do. <laughs> so would you always come back here? Yeah, I always come back okay. home, right? One, no, one time we did, a bunch of us, we went to Chicago one time, got on the train and went out to this fellow's house in Chicago, a friend of ours in Chicago, was in the service, mm -hmm. and spent time out there and then come back home. And about four of us went out there. I don't know why we'd done that, just crazy thing. We all got together, went to his house, and he was, where did he live in? Uh, Cal Calumet City, Illinois, I think mm -hmm. it was, he lived. Okay. Um... What, I, I guess you mentioned something like this before, you had some excitements and, yeah. and things like that uh, during some of the convoy efforts, I guess. There was that one night that you're talking right. about. Were, were there others that were that particularly stick in your mind? Mm, not really, just rough weather and, and more rough weather. Well, we never had, there were just submarines out there, which you get the sound of the submarine and you'd lose them and, you know, you'd just be out. Yeah. Maneuvering around. The sound of the submarine. What? Yeah, well, they had uh, the sonar? sonar on there, which would ping, 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 and you'd pick up the sound, but then sometimes whether they either went down or where they went, you'd lose it. And but maybe you, it, you could hear that on the ship? I mean, you could hear that pinging? Oh, yeah, well, if you were up into the, up into that, uh, the, the sonar room, sonar. no. Okay. No, we, we always just got called at general quarters or something. Okay. See? Because we were way back, the sonar room was up further. Yeah. So, um, when you left the service, what was that, two year enlistment basically? I was in, in, it, uh, was in three years, two no. Years. Okay. I got out. I come back two years and then I got transferred. To where? To uh, Earl, New Jersey, which is the ammunition depot down there. What'd you do there? And shore patrol. I was shore patrol down there from. June till February, I think it was, hmm. in Earl, New Jersey, which was great. Where did you get trained for that? Down there? Just a, just a short patrol, just police, you know. You were, I was a coxswain and had a little, you know, a little authority, but okay. we are just, uh, that was an ammunition depot down there where all oh, the sailors just come in and out and you checked your ID or you, you took your Jeep and went downtown. I mean, just right around. It was just, Great. <laughs> I thought it sounded like you had a wonderful experience with the Navy. I did, really. I thought it was I just thought it was great. What do you remember your last day in the Navy? Mm. Now getting out in I went they sent me to Lido Beach to get out. Okay. All I remember is getting everything and I did I said I left everything there. I said I want nothing, just to give me a clothes and go home. I should have taken half the stuff and come home, but I didn't. And just get got transferred and come on up home, that's all. And then that was back here and back now here. you were done with the Navy, right? Right, now I was done with the Navy, right. Then what what'd you do after that? Well when I first got home I got a job down in Hikes Mill and Rentschler, which was a woolen mills for about a year. And then I, my father on the service station up here in East Greenbush, and I come out, and he only had a little, little grocery store with two pumps in front of it. So he said to me, "If you come out here and work, we'll build a service station." So we built on, and that's what I'd done for the rest of my life was up the service station with my father. Good. Now you've maintained contact. Have you maintained contact with some oh, of them? Oh, yeah. I've made contact with a lot of them, right. Mm -hmm. and, and what's that like? I mean, do you write to them or do you see them? Or? Oh, I see them. We used to have, we had a few unions along the line. Mm -hmm. But it's just getting so that everybody getting to the age, they just don't want to, yeah. they don't want to travel. Yeah. But Where the, are they? Are they scattered all over the country? Oh, all over the country. I can go, I got a list here from California mm -hmm. right through to Florida, all over. They're all over, really. They're all over. And you can't believe, I can't believe how old some of them are because yeah. I must have been just a kid, yeah. <laughs> 18 years old, because some of these fellows are 87, 88, yeah. 89 years old. Older fellows in, was in there. Huh. Um, you said that there were maybe a couple hundred people a couple on the ship? A couple hundred, I'd say, yes. 
do you think you, I mean, would you think that you knew everybody's name or half of them or? I'd say we knew three quarters of them, yes. I'd say we knew everyone, really, because you're with them for, you know, say 22 days, you're with them a couple of years, you know. Were, were most of the crew on the ship the whole time you were, or was there a lot of rotation? There was a lot of rotation. There was. Yes, okay. yes. Because, uh, like, um, we knew, I knew if I made Coxon, I was going to get transferred. Uh -huh. And there was about oh, eight of us in this in division. We all said, oh, Jesus, this is good. Why do we want to get transferred to something else? We had it. So we all took the test and got Cox and we all got transferred. Once That's you made, true. once you see, you got up and made a group, they transferred you to another ship or something. Yeah. Did you go as a group then? All, all, the all We all got transferred together to, to different parts. No, oh. different parts of the country. No, there's one fella from New York City that got transferred with me. We ended up down in. Um, Pier 92, and he went to down New Jersey mm -hmm. with with me, mm -hmm. and he was aboard ship with me. Yeah. Right? But like other fellas, well, w when you got when you got off ship, you got a 30 day leave, mm -hmm. it's rehabilitation leave, whatever they call it. But most of the fellas had a choice of where to go to, and most of them took close to home. You know what I'm trying to yeah. say? Yeah. Um, let. Let me ask you, are there, are there some particular photos in here that mean something to you especially or, or that would, we could just flip through quickly? And yeah, you can look at them. <laughs> Maybe you can. Well, see, they, they don't mean a whole lot to me. No, because, playing cards there. Yeah. All right. Is that, is that is you? Are you no, in there? I'm not in any of these. No, nope, I'm not in that. That's a, I'm not, I can name every one of them there, though, but I'm not in one of them at all. The only thing, that's why it must be in, this must be in some kind of a, a drill or action. You can see everybody at the guns. Oh, yeah. See, and, and okay, here we're laying the smoke screen here, too, for some reason, you know. Hmm. Now, this was, you said this was a new ship that you were on. Yeah, this was a new ship, right? The yeah. same as what's over in Albany. Did it D. hold up? Yeah. Did it hold up well? Yes, did I thought it did really well. Okay, here's one thing that come to me. Where to go to? It was Christmas. <laughs> we made a Santa Claus. <laughs> Where's a couple more? We went around the convoy, through the ships, waving to everybody. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, the little ones are that. That there, I can't remember real well. All right, everybody blew the whistles and. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was must have been Christmas Day. I don't even. But, but might, this is while the convoy was, was underway. Moving, right, right. So the convoy was underway. We. Everybody's got to be alert. Yeah. Did you do something like that for Thanksgiving too? Or? I know that's the only thing I remember. Just was that Christmas. I don't know. Somebody got the idea of dressing up and going around. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, no, it's just church service. We always held up on the mm -hmm. forecastle here, and the one fellow had always had church service up there. Mm -hmm. In the movies. <laughs> where would they show the movies? <laughs> In the mess hall, but you can't even see. But that's where you can't even see the. Yeah. Oh, here's the screen in this one. We all squeezed into there. The oh, the barber. The screen looks like a bed sheet. Huh? And the barber cutting our hair. Hmm. All right, then this was uh, refueling at sea. You had to refuel from a tanker at sea. Now how, how does that work? They pass a hose across, right? Yeah, you, you, have, you, you get up as close to the ship as you can, and they shoot a gun over with a line on. You keep getting the line smaller, smaller, and you get to a big line, then you pull your, uh, your fuel line over, and you put it in your tank, it clips on like yeah. a, you know, it yeah. clamps on, yeah. and then you just ride side by side, hope everything goes good. How long would it take to? Oh, to it wouldn't fuel? take but 20 minutes or so. It didn't take long to pump fuel right over to us, right? Yeah. How much fuel would you get in 20 minutes? I have no idea in that. See, I wasn't involved in that. That was uh, that was more your engineer yeah. transfer guys from ship to ship. Okay. 
<laughs> here he is in the middle. Oh, yeah. Okay, now he's pulling the rope across, trying, you know, what what you had to do. You had to pull that fellow across. You had to keep that rope taut. Yep. And if you let it go, you had to work back and forth. He winds up in the water. If right. Right. Uh, just. To, all right. Here's a, here he is. That's him coming across, and here's his baggage coming across. <laughs> That's about it. Okay. That was exciting. All right, now, you said how many officers? Can you count how many are in there? Uh, looks to me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe? Eight, okay. Then there had to be a couple up on watch while yeah. we're underway. Maybe eight. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, that's it. Well, it sounds like... Oh, well, there's the rocket Gibraltar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this fellow done a good job of taking pictures yeah. for. This, is this just a little buoy sitting out there? Yeah, it must be. I see that out there. There must be buoys going on through there. And the officers always had their uh, deluxe. Yeah. deluxe. <laughs> Quality set up there. They're young men too, aren't they? Huh. So it sounds like uh, you pretty much enjoyed, oh, yeah. Wait. enjoyed your experience there. Huh? I don't think the dull rest are just reunion pictures I got here. Well, let me see here. This is there anything else that we haven't talked about that registers with you that you'd like to comment about? No, not really. No? That we have these reunions and we do get together. Yeah. Oh. When, when was the last reunion that you had? Here? Well, it must be three years now. And where did you do that? That was in Las Vegas. I didn't go to that one, oh. but they had it out in Las Vegas. Okay. Who organizes them? Uh, the first fellow, there was a fellow by the name of Sadowski. He lived in Florida. He started it. Mm -hmm. Well, and then from there, well, Gus Scappa, he took over, which he lives down the road here. Uh, he's... He lives in Florida, but right now he's up here yeah. for the summer. Uh, he took over, and we had it in Florida two or three times. We had it in Niagara Falls one time, Good. Las Vegas. How many people would come to this? Oh, geez, we get probably 30, 40. He's getting down, though, now. There's, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's down. <laughs> This guy's only half. Every time we turn around, another one, that, another one is dying. The reason for this project right. is to catch some of these recollections right. while they're still there. Right. Mm -hmm. That night, I do remember that night though, the aircraft that uh, the cook was standing there, and he had a thing of potatoes, throwing potatoes at the aircraft. I don't know how to expect to hit him. He was having a good time throwing potatoes, but we always had a good time for some reason. Huh. That's why we never had any problems, I guess. Yeah. Well, okay. we got we got uh, referendum once over in New London, Connecticut. Uh, they went to they went ashore and they got in a fight and the captain was the leader of the gang and oh. we got banded from New London, Connecticut. We couldn't go back there anymore, <laughs> but we had a good captain. Now, I think that's the main thing of of service if you have a good commander or captain, good right? And how about with the rest of the officers good too? I mean, yeah, we had a few. One guy we called Gertie, but <laughs> he was yeah. all right. But he was always trying to catch somebody doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. Right. You, you know, you used to have a chair like this, and you have glasses to look out, and you'd be there. You could fall asleep, come up and rub his hands across one of the glasses like that. <laughs> and if you didn't react, he you knew you. He'd shake it. Come on, sleeping. you're sleeping. <laughs> And he was the only one ever to give us trouble. Most of them were great, great eggs. Did, did they change a lot during the course of your time there? Did you get a lot of different uh, officers? Did you have yes. the same command at all times? No. They kind of worked their way up. Okay. We started off with a lieutenant commander, which he was a real Navy man. And then he went for one, one or two trips, and then followed by the name of Wetman took over. He was a Jewish kid. 
and he he was there for for quite a while but then near the end he got transferred and the the fellow who was behind him jumped up to command which was yeoman mr yeoman which they're all good you know yeah. they worked their way up through the ranks in there and as soon as they made the next rank they got shipped out to another yeah. ship or something yeah. Great. Well, that's it well thank you very much right i lived i lived a good life afterwards yeah. sounds like it yeah, yeah. sounds like Sounds like there was some good luck involved in all of Oh, this yeah, well, it was a lot, lot of yeah. luck. Yeah, a lot of luck. Things we'd done, we just can't believe. Yeah. We run aground once, you know, but you? over in Bizzerti, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going in Bizzerti, and there was a ship that was sunk there. And we had to go between the ship, and there was, we had a, uh, what do you call him, a pilot bringing us in. Mm -hmm. But he was speaking Italian. <laughs> we said the old Jew guy couldn't speak Italian, so that's why we went to ground. Boom. <laughs> How'd you get off? Uh, the tug pulled us back off, then they sent us down to Iran to dry dock, and uh -huh. we were there for a couple of days and back on our way again. Yeah. No damage, particularly. Well, the way I understand, below your ship, your uh, sonar drops down, and that, well, we hit that, I think. Uh -huh. Of course, we had no sonar to go back to Iran. Yeah. No, oh, we got in. We got a lot of trouble. Yeah. The the crew got in a lot of trouble on the way. I will say that always in the trouble. Like what? Fights, you know, fights with the Arabs and who were over in Iran, and uh, you stood guard on the tailgate and on that and. The captain said, now, if anybody comes around, you shoot him, you shoot at him. Mm -hmm. And one night, there was a guy out there running around a rowboat in the air, and geez, they pop, 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 and th they got hell for that. that mm -hmm. They didn't say who's there or yeah. something. <laughs> just, just little things. Mm -hmm. But I loved it. Okay. I'd go back in now, Look really. If the same crew and everything, yeah. I'd go back yeah. in. Good life. No, because even now I'm in contact with, oh, geez, I don't know. I have a list here of, oh, there's a whole list of crew <laughs> that I keep contact with. Send out, you know. Yeah. But everybody, like, like now, uh, that we want to get together here in Albany, and they want me to take over, which I think I'm going to try, try to do. But there ain't that many who... Everybody you talk to say, oh, Jesus, so-and-so dropped dead. And yeah, yeah. I was talking to a fellow out in California, which she's 80-some nurse. He's in a nursing home. He, he couldn't make it, but his name was Gentile. But he was from Boston to begin with, you know. Mm -hmm. Just. And some of the fellows you can talk to, and they won't never come to a reunion. I don't know why. People are funny. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. no problem. Let me, uh, let me see if I can pack this up. I even think someday I'd bring these down to this uh, DE down here and see if they wanted them. You know, pictures like that.